This video will explain the semantic pyramid for image generation model developed by researchers at Google. This model presents a novel way to visualize what is captured in intermediate features of pre-trained image classification networks. This architecture controls what image will be produced by the generator as it goes from the random vector z into the generated image by embedding the intermediate feature maps of the classification networks with the intermediate representations from the generator network. This can be controlled by, say, only embedding the fourth layer of the pre-trained classifier or by applying an amoeba-shaped mask to the feature map to be embedded with the generator's representations. In addition to visualizing the classification network's features with the added realism loss from the generative adversarial network framework, this architecture can be used for semantic image editing, like copying a tree and pasting it into a snow mountain landscape and then having the model smoothly blended in. It can also be used for image relabeling by changing the embedded logits from the pre-trained classifier to say flip an image from a cat to a dog while semantically preserving as much of the original image as possible. This video will also discuss why I think this could be really useful for data augmentation and some other papers in the space of GAN generated data for data augmentation. This video will explain semantic pyramid for image generation. This video will explain a new GAN model for image generation developed by researchers at Google AI. This model conditions the generator with features from a pre-trained classification network in a novel way. This is useful for image editing and manipulation for data augmentation, as well as visualizing what is inside of these pre-trained feature maps used for controllable generation in this architecture. This video will explain the details behind the semantic pyramid for image generation and the applications demonstrated in the paper. This image depicts an overview of the semantic pyramid for image generation pipeline. So the idea here is to combine the generative process going from a random noise vector into a target image in the generator of the generative adversarial network framework, but also integrate information from the intermediate features in an image classification network. So in papers like uh, neural style transfer, or even these uh, state-of-the-art object detection models like efficient uh, debt, they combine, they utilize this hierarchical representation of images that arises from the way that these uh, convolutional classification networks sequentially process the input image. So what you'd expect is in these uh, earlier layers right from the input, you'd expect to have more global structure information captured in these layers compared to the texture and high frequency information in the later layers. So the idea is to uh, selectively take out these feature maps from the pre-trained image classifier network and embed them with the intermediate uh, features of the generator network. So the idea here is you have these generator blocks where you take the features from the pre-trained network, you apply some mass to them, then you apply convolution and then integrate this with the current feature map in the generator as it's going from random noise vector to the target output. And we'll see how uh, different images are generated based on how you apply these masks and with which uh, feature maps from the pre-trained image classifier you use to take the feature maps out. So say you take out uh, the second convolutional layer compared to the seventh layer or the first fully connected layer and how that results in different generated images. There's a lot of interesting details as well that arise out of how you apply this mask to the intermediate features when you're taking it from the pre-trained classification network and then embedding it in the generator's intermediate features. So you have these spatially varying masks where you might have something like this blob feature where you uh, zero out the uh, features from the pre-trained network that lie in this black region and then you only pass information that uh, is not in the black mask region. So the idea here is that you can further control and have more diversity in the generated images by simply varying these masks or then choosing which of these uh, layers you're gonna apply different masks to. So you see in some cases, like in this case, MI plus one, which might be like the sixth convolutional layer in the pre-trained classification network, you completely zero it out. So it won't contribute at all to the generated image. Whereas this fully white image means all the features are embedded in the generator. And then, you know, these selective uh, features that are embedded in the uh, generator's representation. This animation from their GitHub page corresponding with their paper shows the differences between different images and different layers from the pre-trained classification network that you choose to embed within the generator's representation going from random vector Z into the output image. So in this case, the animation is showing five different sampled random vector Zs and then linearly interpolating between what they generate. So the idea here is uh, you sample five different random vector Z and then the animation comes from uh, smoothly going from say Z1 to Z2 to Z3 and so on. So what you see here is in addition to uh, showing that you still have this diversity that comes from the different sample noise vectors, you also see the difference in the images depending on which layer of the pre-trained classification network you use to embed within the intermediate representation of the generator network. So you see how in uh, the fourth layer of the convolution, you preserve this global structure of the input image better than compared to the uh, eighth layer or the fully connected 
eighth layer more particularly, you see that you have more of the high frequency information, but you don't really preserve the global information of the input image. These images further illustrate what happens with this when you have the different random sample Z and then the different uh, layers in the network that you're using to take from the pre-trained network and then put it into the intermediate representations of the generator. And it's maybe a bit easier to visualize without the animation just to see the difference between the different images with the different layers and then the different uh, Z vectors that result in being able to generate different images despite this kind of uh, same pre-trained network uh, embedding feature is going into the generator network. So what this is showing is which layer of the pre-trained classification network is being embedded into the generator's intermediate representation. So when we describe, say, uh, convolutional layer 6, it says uh, take, say, this layer's features and then put this into the generator, but then don't use any of these other features. Just to illustrate the difference between uh, what kind of features are contained in the pre-trained classification network and then how they condition the uh, resulting generated image as it's passed through this generator network from random vector z into the target output. So it's really interesting to see the difference between uh, what kind of images come out of taking features from the earlier trained, uh, earlier layers of the trained classification network compared to the later layers. In addition to being an interesting tool for visualizing what is contained in these pre-trained features of these image classification networks, it's also useful for image repainting inputs outside the natural image distribution, like having a sketch drawing and then synthesizing a photorealistic image, semantic composition, which is where you drop a new object in a scene, then have it uh, like semantically blended in with the original scene, and then image relabeling, which is where you take images like this of a volcano and then relabel them or recondition them as a snowy mountain and see the new image that comes out of this. The first application they show demonstrates the power of these spatially varying mass that they use to apply onto the pre-trained features before they hit the representations in the generator network. So the first of this is image repainting, which is where they're going to apply the mask on this given uh, object in the image, and then they're going to continue the generation process as normal from then on uh, from this mask. And then you're going to see this diversity in the generated images from applying this mask on this one object. This animation from the GitHub page further illustrates this application of image repainting and how they can mask out this certain object and then generate different backgrounds while keeping the same object in place. This could be really useful for data augmentation uh, applications where you keep the object in place and then you randomize the background such that you can uh, control and kind of have that prior in the classification network in the data space through data augmentation. The next application they show is the ability to generate images when the input is outside of the natural image distribution. So this model is trained on the Places 365 dataset, which are these photographs of these uh, landscapes or different, uh, you know, like historical landmarks and things like that. And the idea here is that you're taking an input or that uh, input that goes through the pre-trained classification network and then the intermediate feature maps are sent to the generator and they're outside of the natural image distribution, meaning that it's like hand-drawn sketches or paintings and things like this that, you know, the discriminator uh, versus generator realism task isn't really trained to handle well. This image shows further examples of generating images from line drawings, grayscale images, or paintings that are able to be uh, generated in the photorealistic kind of setting with this uh, semantic pyramid for image generation. So in a similar way as the Galgan is able to synthesize these uh, landscapes from the pixel maps, this is able to synthesize images from sketches of the original image. The next application demonstrated in the paper is semantic image composition. This is where you take a given object and then try to synthesize it onto the original landscape and then have it blended in with the original uh, background. So you see the example of copying and pasting this kind of uh, temple onto this background and then having it be synthesized in this way or this way on the snow background or in this way with adding a mountain to this landscape. This image further shows examples of semantic image composition. And this is done by combining the pre-trained classification features of the source image and the target image, and then using this, uh, th this kind of new image of just naively copying and pasting it on top of the other, and then using the features that come out of putting that kind of image through the classification network to condition the generator to form this kind of uh, naturally blended looking image. The next application of this explored in the paper is image relabeling. These input images are being passed through these pre-trained classification networks. The classification networks are trained to label these images as either field road or forest road or field cultivated or things like this. These are the kind of labels in this Places 365 dataset that this model is trained on. So what they show is that by changing these uh, features that come from that last fully connected layer in the uh, pre-trained classifier that's then going to get embedded into the generated image, you can uh, produce these different images that still resemble the original input, but then have the new class label. So I think this is a really interesting application for things like data augmentation, where you want to have a more diverse data set and do semantic manipulations of the data in this kind of way. The semantic pyramid for image generation model is trained by optimizing these three loss functions. 
The adversarial loss between the generator and the discriminator, which is where the discriminator is classifying whether these images are real or fake, and the generator is thus trying to produce more real looking images. Then the reconstruction loss, which is where you compare the feature activation of the generated image with the original input image on the layer that you've passed the features through. So say you've uh, taken the fifth layer, the fifth convolutional layer features, and then you're taking it from the input image and comparing it with the resulting output image to see how different the activations of that pre-trained classification network are between the original and the generated image. And that forms the reconstruction loss. Then the diversity loss is to encourage these uh, source vector Z to produce different images. So you want uh, Z1 to produce a much different image than Z2 does, which are just these random vectors that are the source for the generator network. So it could be some uh, vector like 0, 1, or you know these random combinations that form the different inputs to the generator. So you want to explicitly encourage them to be different in this loss term, in the overall loss function that trains the semantic pyramid for image generation. This paper explores the use of these hierarchical image features that arise from these sequential convolutional neural networks that have been explored in other papers as well. A neural algorithm of artistic style, or the original paper behind neural style transfer, shows that you can separate out style and content by optimizing for matching features and throughout different layers of the neural network. Also, these modern object detection networks utilize the different features that are hierarchically processed through a given image classifier like the efficient net to blend it into the features used to train the detection models. Another really interesting component of this paper is that you're able to visualize these intermediate features in these convolutional uh, neural networks trained on image classification while still preserving realism in the images that maximally activate these features. So a lot of these studies like Zoom In and Introduction to Circuits, there are a lot of papers in this uh, distilled publication that are looking at how to visualize what kind of images maximally activate neurons in these uh, image classification networks. So one way to do this would be to uh, just optimize the image to you know, have the maximal activation. But what you get is things like Deep Dream, are these kind of images that you know, they look really odd. They don't, they don't have that realism loss that comes out of the adversarial generator versus discriminator trained on uh, match the real or the natural image distribution. So that's a really interesting characteristic of this paper is that you're able to do feature visualization while still having kind of a natural image. Another setting where this realism loss could be interesting is in the generative teaching network framework. This is a new meta-learning algorithm where the meta-learning controller is trying to design a data set that can quickly train a neural network to perform well on, say, the CIFAR-10 test set. It's also on MNIST and I think other data sets as well. But what you get from the generative teaching network are these uh, images that, to us looking at them, make, don't make any sense at all. So it might be interesting to add the realism loss to the generative teaching network as well, such that kind of, you know, the images make more sense to us. One application of these kind of models and these uh, generative adversarial networks that I think is really interesting is data augmentation with the GAN generated data. Or taking this uh, data that comes out of the GANs and just appending it to the previous data set, use the trained classification models, which I think could really be useful, especially in cases with limited data. So in this case, we saw examples where you can just change the label in that pre-trained image classifier to get new images that could be really useful for training these uh, classification networks. Because if you have this uh, original image highway and you're uh, misclassifying it as desert road, to see this example, which is uh, really close to the original one, but has this new label, could really help these classifiers have stronger decision boundaries. If you're interested in exploring data augmentation with GAN-generated data, I highly recommend checking out this paper, DermGAN. In this case, they're randomizing these uh, skin lesion images in order to avoid bias on uh, like skin type or the lighting conditions or other different things that might bias the classifier. So use these generative adversarial networks to produce more diverse data in a similar way as uh, these applications of the semantic pyramid can produce more diverse data to produce uh, more robust classifiers. Another interesting paper on this is classification accuracy score for conditional generative models. This is exploring how well you can use GAN-generated or uh, variational autoencoder data to train classification models. In this case, they also show the performance gains by uh, appending this data onto the original data set and then training classifiers on it. Another interesting paper is the GAU-GAN. This is similar to this paper where you have this pixel map and then you synthesize a photorealistic image from it. And I think it could be really interesting to have these kind of images that are added to the data set for data augmentation. Another interesting paper is SYNGAN. SYNGAN uh, it has a similar kind of hierarchical representation to generate images from a single source image. And what's interesting here is that it kind of isn't biased by any other samples in the data set as it produces these little variations that could be like similar to how, uh, adding noise in an image's useful data augmentation uh, algorithm. This kind of technique could also be really interesting for adding this kind of semantic randomization in the original input data space. 
Another paper is StyleGAN 2 distillation for feedforward image manipulation, showing how you can transfer the styles in these StyleGAN models, as well as the semi-supervised StyleGAN for disentanglement learning, which is where you're uh, separating these different factors of variation in the images and then synthesizing new images by controlling the different factors that control the generated images, all of which could be useful for having these more diverse data sets that are more useful for uh, data augmentation and training classifiers or miscellaneous computer vision models. Thanks for watching this explanation of Semantic Pyramid for Image Generation, a really interesting new model that embeds features from pre-trained image classification networks into the generative process of a generative adversarial network model. This is really useful for things like semantic image composition or image relabeling, as well as just visualizing what's in these pre-trained feature maps of these classification networks. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.